Greetings, fellow Classic TV fans. Lens master Johanna Sigmund has been turning heads with her artistic portraits for many moons. More than just a photographer, she's taken the practice to artistic new levels with her wonderful coffee table book, In Good Company, Notable People with Their Pets. We discuss some of her interesting experiences snapping away at prominent celebrities and their now equally prominent pets. Her enthusiasm for her work shines brightly in this interview, but having seen her work, I can tell you that she has every right to be, excuse the pun, doggone proud of it. Enjoy! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast the truly gifted photographer, Johanna Sigmund. Hi, Johanna! Hey, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> we were talking about our Wordle scores right before we got on here, and <laughs> honestly... <laughs> I really don't play that, but <laughs> oh, I, I I fell off the cliff. I, I was doing really well, and then all of a sudden, you know, squirrel, you know, something else distracts me. So <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what that's from, right? Yes. That's uh -huh. up. Oh, was it up? I think it was up. Where the dog yeah, I, I mean, it's, or, or if anybody who has a dog, <laughs> yes, you know, it's they're. Their uh, dogs are amazing. Well, what a great segue, considering. <laughs> I mean, hey, how about that? I uh, set you right up. I, like I said, I before we started, I'm a fan of your work because, well, Thank you. number one, I'm an animal lover, mm -hmm. wife and I very much so. Um, but we went into we went to the Turner Classic Film Festival a couple weeks back and stopped by the Hollywood Museum. Oh, awesome. Do you know <laughs> so where I'm going with that? that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't that a wonderful exhibit? Oh, my goodness. It really is. Film and TV families. I, I, well, I'm, I'm friends with Jerry and Teresa Mathers, and they were the ones that actually initially let me know that that was going on. Oh, yeah. He was there for the, the book signing. We had a big, a big to do there. Right. He and my other pal, Kathy Garver. Oh, yes. Yes. And, I, you know, it's funny. I, I, I know Kathy loved her Coco so much, and it was so sweet to see that, that picture with her and him um, no longer with us. But then, of course, <laughs> I'm looking at Jerry's, and I'm like, okay, well, now, I'm sure Run Ton Ton isn't around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was he a big dog? <laughs> yeah, I mean it was. What well, was a German Shepherd? It had to be because it was like yes, Jerry. Yeah. That's Rin Tin Tin. No, it's Ron Tun Tun. And I'm thinking some of the names that these folks have given their. Well, yeah. look, that's the beauty and one of the joys of of having a pet is that you can name them whatever you want. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of specifically that in my book, so okay, in my book, there's um, Ed Bakley Jr. called his dog Bunny. Uh, Lou Parker, news anchor Lou, Par Lou Parker called her dog Monkey, and I'm thinking, why are people calling their dogs different animals? <laughs> why is the name of the dog a different animal? <laughs> I don't understand. It's very confusing. <laughs> yeah, my dog Cat will never appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, it's like a boy named Sue, a dog named Cat. Yes, I, it's, it's traumatizing, I think. Well, you know what some of the most clever names I've heard for uh, cats or for, for an animal pet mm -hmm. uh, are from our mutual buddy, Harlan Bull. Uh-huh. He had three cats. I don't think they're all there still, but... All oh, right. Emmy, Tony, and... And Oscar. And Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, it's still in the names program. Uh, uh, Arturo Sandoval, the legendary trumpet virtuoso, who's also in my book, he named his three Pomeranians Gucci, Coco, and Chanel. Oh, perfect. So, yes. Of yeah. Of course. And I'm sure they were spoiled and pampered as could be. Beyond measure. <laughs> the photo, he said, um, oh, yeah, no, we get up every morning, and the first thing we do is I give them Black Forest ham. So that's what the photo is, them having Black Forest ham. 
<laughs> well, you know, I, I like I said, I, I loved looking at your work uh, at the museum. I'm going to get this book because I'm Thank finally you. getting a coffee table. <clears throat> Yay! <laughs> well, yeah, that's the right order. You need to have a coffee table to put the coffee table book on, you know? Exactly. And, you can't and it's put called... it on the buffet. It's not a buffet ta- uh, co- ta- uh, book. It's a coffee table book. <laughs> True. And it's not for the bathroom either, folks. By the way. No. Well, yeah. (laughs) Don't go there. (laughs) It's called In Good Company, which is just a perfect title, I think, because. Thank you. You know, (laughs) they they are the perfect company. Yes. But but you're you're an artist, and and clearly, I mean, (laughs) you've probably heard all the terms: shutterbug, um, lens master. I made that one up. (laughs) <laughs> um, all these, uh, you know, monikers that you can have. But really, your photography is—it's not just portraits. It's—it's—it's it's, it's catching the moment. It's—it's—it's it's, it's artwork. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm so glad you said that because that is exactly. I did not set out. These are not what I would call representational portraits, which is what most pet portraiture and and. Just to be clear, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. There are some really beautiful pet portraiture out there. But I wanted to do something different, and I call this interpretational portraits. They're portraits of love. They're portraits about the relationship between people and their pets. Um, they are... They just show this intimate view of daily life and all the little things that people and pets do to show their love for each other. Right. And it can be, you know, there can be uh, very exuberant moments like the cover shot of hip hop art, uh, choreographer Dave Scott with Dudley and they're in the air dancing. <laughs> or it could be something as really tender and small and gentle as uh, actor Ed Bagley Jr. kissing his bunny on the head. Yeah. His dog called Bunny, not a bunny rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and and you know the images try and incorporate a bunch of things like you know what it is we know people for like Ed Bagley's is he we all know he's an environmentalist and the pictures him in his garden uh, he he grows he grows food in his in his yard so he's in one of his vegetable beds his salad his salad bed with with bunny who's helping him so they incorporate you know a little bit about the person and whatever cute little foibles or habits or rituals that people do with their with their pets Uh, one of my favorite uh, there's a um, tracy gluck who's a a wealth management uh, advisor for uh, morgan stanley yes she uh she reads stories to one of her two dogs there are two pictures of she has two dogs and there's a picture of each one of them and the one with uh, scooter is um she's reading him a bedtime story but not just any you know how kids get under the cover with a with a light to read when they're not supposed to be reading you know going to bed so the dog is under the they're under the, they're under a tent of a of, of a sheet and you can see her reading to the dog under it so they're you know they're very tender very personal moments and they're very unique to that relationship so there will never be two pictures the same because no two people are the same and no no two relationships with their pets are the same and no two pets are the same. So there's a lot of work that goes into getting, um, before we, before we even schedule the shoot, I, I come up with a concept based on information they provide for me. And when they, when they approve of the concept, then we set, then we set the date. Uh, that's wonderful. Cause, yeah. I can't just show up with my lights and my camera. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Right. Well, and I noticed that you know, you had a background in theater and, of course, a multi-talented artist, obviously, and, but you're able to combine that influence. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. With- yeah. That theater taught me so much about so many things that I, that I, I would never have thought applied to photography, and yet they do. Um, one is working with a great, diverse type of people. You know, very shy people, very, very bold people, you know, people who have great success, people who are just starting out, just this whole range of people. So, so it helped my communication skills. I directed for seven years. And so that helped me also with my communication skills and eliciting from my subjects exactly what I, what I want. Um, it really helped with the entire 
production of of a photo shoot from the lighting to the wardrobe to just the color combinations in a room you know and and incorporating the the wardrobe into that and selecting the right props and all of that all of that artistic thing that you are you are remarking on is in large part from my experience in theater, but also from my, the fact that my mom is was also an artist. She was a very well-known sculptor in Mexico where I grew up. The work is, it's obvious that you incorporate that, and that's part of the reason I love it so much. Your, your book incorporates um, not only people in, in, in the entertainment industry, but, you know, from all walks of, you know, successful right. folks. A lot of different fields, you know, astronomy, sports, um, politics, uh, jewelry, yeah, you know, uh, singers, dancers, there's, and all of these people, I call it notable people with their pets, because they are notable in their fields. They are famous in their field, even if they may not be famous or celebrities, you know, uh, household names. Some of them are like Ed Bagley and Ed Asner and Norman Lear. Um, and, but most of them are not. And there's a section, there's a bio section at the back so that people are looking at something going, I never heard of this person. And they go and find out that, oh, he developed the method for weighing spiral galaxies. <laughs> That's this astronomer, uh, internationally recognized astronomer. So, wow. uh, yeah. Way, way to cover the bases, Johanna. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> and, you know, it's been the, the response has just been so positive i've already started working on a segue on a on a, on a follow-up for this so excellent well mm-hmm. and of course <laughs> my audience they're kind of fickle they're about <clears throat> the title of this which is retro tv radio it's retro tv so uh, obviously when i went into the hollywood museum it was like well it's just actors and then i learned that it like it like we just said it covers a lot of the a lot of the other folks but i do know <laughs> one question that my listeners will want to know is what was the most extraordinary experience that you had doing a photo session for an actor or actress golly uh Besides all of them. <laughs> Besides all of them. Well, I think because it kind of came out organically, uh, Norman Lear was was just a, a remarkable experience. First of all, Norman Lear is possibly the most wonderful human on the planet. He is just such a kind, fun, gentle, intelligent, you know, visionary. Um, and I was I was actually hired to take some photos of his artwork for a book that was getting published. And um, he asked uh, his assistant, he said, his assistant said he wanted to meet me. I said, okay, sure. So when I finished, when I finished my shoot, he, uh, he, we, we, he showed up, we said hello, and we, he's, we started talking about the kinds of photography. And I said, uh, yeah, no, I do people with their pets. He goes, oh, yeah, no, that wouldn't work for me. I hate my pets. I said, oh, I have the perfect concept for you so when i told him he said let's do it and so we pulled out our our phones and we you know and we um we scheduled the shoot right then and there for a couple of days later and he was so thrilled with the with the result it's such a fun and very subtle you know because he's not front and center he's he's like in the background with with uh, his his pets uh, he's outside with the pets looking through the window at him and uh, <laughs> and, and he he just he he called me personally to thank me for the big, beautiful photo and he has it hanging outside his home office Aww. so um yeah so i think that was very memorable the whole uh but you know the, the they're all memorable in their own way, you know. Uh, there, I did a, a shoot with Adrian Wilkinson, who played um, the daughter of Xena, the warrior princess. Oh, sh- sure. And she had this tiny little dog called Tazo. He was some like a papillon type little tiny thing and ancient ancient and she said uh in, in you know of the do they have any special foods they like that kind of stuff and she said oh, he loves watermelon I'm like oh well we're gonna do a shoot with watermelon in it and when we put this plate of watermelon on it i i was not prepared for how 
passionate he was about <laughs> watermelon. He just dove at this plate of wedges and grabbed the biggest one. It was literally half his size. It was just the most gigantic piece of watermelon he could get. And uh, so little things like that. They're, they're, they're small little anecdotes. I did a shoot with uh, Bill Peterson. He's a, a trumpeter, a studio trumpeter that's been around. He's, sure. he's, yeah, he, um, uh, he had, he and his wife, they have two, uh, wire hair terriers, uh, Nick and Nora. <laughs> and, and Nick just refused to be in front of the camera. So I was, while I was shooting Bill with Nora, Nick came up and started licking me in my ear. So that was a little <laughs> bit distracting. Um, <laughs> just very, very funny. And I did manage, of course, to, to get, to get my shot with Nick in it too. So. Oh, that's wonderful. I was thinking, I'm asking this question, and that may actually be a subject for a whole nother book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in, in good company, and you had to be there. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, oh, the making of, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the book, um, I should really, instead of just saying the book, I should say in good company, so that people who are just tuning in know what, what we're talking about. Um, my book, In Good Company, Notable People with Their Pets, does have, uh, next to every single image, there's a little... A little snippet, a little blurb about, you know, behind the scenes. So there is some of that in, in the book, in addition to the bios at the back of the book. For, you know, there's one for, for everybody. And there's, let me see, there's 75 photos. There's over 50, 50 notable people. Um, there are <clears throat> eight different types of species. It's not just dogs and cats. Uh, and I have photographed myself. I have photographed over, over 25 different species. So, um, very, very, and, and I want to do more. So if you know anybody that has a pet cow or a pet uh, emu or a pet. <laughs> just let me know. I would love to shoot with them. Yeah. I was thinking my anaconda might be up for it, but I can't get it to smile. You know? It's no. Cute. I. You know, I, I've photographed snakes uh, previously. I love photographing snakes. Do you have an anaconda? Seriously? I certainly do not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you tease. <laughs> I, I would be like... Hey, honey, what happened to the two cats? Oh, I don't yeah, know. Right. <laughs> there's a couple of lumps in George over there, though. I... <laughs> well, there's what this one. Uh, I, I photographed this one. Guy. There is a snake in in the book. Uh, it's a little corn snake, and her name's Petula. She's Alex Rybex. He's a musical director mm. on Broadway, and he's um, she is so beautiful. Such a pretty little snake. Um, but I photographed. Uh, um, a blood python before just they're beautiful animal i know people are very freaked out by them and they think they're slimy but they're they're really remarkable and they're actually really shy yeah. so um you know i think that's the biggest surprise when people touch a snake it's like oh oh this is really soft this yeah. is very smooth yeah well and you're right about the fact over the years over the centuries Thousands of years, who knows that their designs, their colorings are just spectacular. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them are. Some of them kind of kind of designed to blend into the dirt so they're not very showy but yeah there are so many the, the color and the the markings are remarkable on them yeah so, so they're beautiful and for the most part friendly and i never really yeah. had that revulsion of snakes my dad yeah. if he saw one on tv he was running for the bathroom i mean uh, yeah i have a friend like that too so there's but you know you, you're talking about beautiful and and um this is one of the things that my when i look at someone or something to photograph what what i'm seeing is the beauty of that person or that thing it's it's um they go well i know i'm not not photographic i'm not photogenic i, I i'm really ugly i'm like yeah i'm like not to me you're not and they're always very surprised at, at how beautiful i make them look and it's not photoshop it's it's the right angle it's the right lighting it's you know it's I think that that is possibly the, the the biggest talent that a photographer can do is to take something and and see the beauty in it. 
right. um, and keep it organic. I mean, there's different types of photography. There, not everybody has to do that. You know, obviously, photojournalists don't do that. Architects don't. Well, no, you know what? I do architectural photograph, and yes, I have to find the beauty in the subject as well. So, yeah. Well, I saw that my former podcast guest, Dee Wallace. Uh, wrote the uh, forward for the book. Am I right? Yeah, right. She not only wrote the forward; she's in the book as well. So, yeah, D is um, D is a friend. She's yeah, she's she's actually one of the reasons that this book came to be. Is she saw my my photography early, early on, and she said, "You have to make this into a book." That was ten years ago. <laughs> so. That's about right. It's taken, <laughs> yeah, it takes a long time. It's the scheduling that takes the long time. You know, when you're dealing with people at this at this level, uh, you know, their schedules are. Some people, there were a lot of people who wanted to be in the book, and and we just could not make the schedule work. Or you know, they they were going out of town, or a project came up. I mean, I traveled to Mexico for this. I, I photographed the former first lady of Mexico. I went to D.C. And I went to Rochester. Do you know um, Lorraine Feather? She is a a jazz composer, singer. She's just amazing. And mm. so I went to Rochester to photograph her. Um, so that you know, it, it the between the traveling and the scheduling, it takes a long time. So hopefully, it won't take that long for my next book for the next issue. Yeah. Great. Well, obviously, a passionate labor of love, and you can't rush art, right? You know, some people try, and I think it shows. <laughs> oh, of course <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing to remember, artists, is that it's never finished. The idea is to just find an interesting place to stop. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, it's. Uh, I think it's a common thing for, for artists to want to get it perfect. And I don't think there's such a thing as you just run out of time. You don't just, you right. don't run there, you run out of, uh, of effort to try and change it. And there's such a thing as overdoing it. And suddenly it's not yeah. as good. And it's just, yep. and then you have to start back. And, and that has happened where I work it and I work it and I work it and work. And then I look at it and go, I look at the original, I look at the work and I'm like, <laughs> no, let me got to start over again. <laughs> exactly. No, it's true. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the Apex Protection Project? Yes, thank you for asking. I wanted to donate a portion of the proceeds to a charity, and I selected the Apex Protection Project, which is dedicated to rescuing and advocating for wolves. They have educational product um, <clears throat> programs, and the reason I chose them is I, you know, our world's problems are so complex. I really wanted something that was like save this, it fixes all this other stuff. And the wolf as an apex predator, when they had, the, the most famous example is Yellowstone. They eradicated their wolves and the park started to die. And when they reintroduced the wolves, the park started to come back to life. And you know, there were numerous reasons, but bringing back, wolves back in was a very major reason for it. And that was a very clear cause and effect uh, for me. And I liked that. And it also showed, you know, the, the educational aspect about it and letting people know that they're not these, you know, the, the f movies and, and the entertainment are always portraying wolves as these vicious, uh, whatever animals. And they're far from that. They're, they're an incredibly, um, uh, they are matriarchal society. They have hierarchies. They, it's just really remarkable. They're very shy. And they, they have a very important position in the world of keeping our ecosystems healthy. And sort of kind of in the same world, I feel uh, way, I feel like my book is about love and about inspiring love. Because when you're with your pet, you're your best self. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, how important you are, how much money you have. When your pet sits there and looks at you, you're just another person in love with a, with an animal. <laughs> That's yeah. it. There's, there's, and, and you would do anything for them. And it's, it's the closest thing to unconditional love that, that humans have other than with their children. Yeah. And, you know, with children, sometimes it's conditional <laughs> behavior. <laughs> but with pets, you know, it just, it brings out the best in us and it brings us, it, re it, it reprioritizes us and it gives us clarity. And they don't know from 
traffic. They don't know from a bad boss. They don't know from, you know, your mortgage. They're just feed me, play with me, love me. That's it. That's all you got with your, with your, with your pet. So, um, when, when I created these images, when people look at them and I've started watching people as they look at it, they put their hand on their, over their heart and they go, Oh, oh, so I know <laughs> it's getting, I know they're getting the feels, you know, I know it's getting them in the heart. And so I'm hoping that in my small way, this, this book helps us navigate through life you look at this book and then you go out there and and you're in a place of love and acceptance and tolerance and generosity and spread that kind of a feeling instead of this divisiveness that's consuming us right now wow well there you go that that is a brilliant concept thank you and i'm sure that the, everyone that gets this book is just going to love 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 it yeah. Speaking of love, you know, Mother's Day is coming up. So that would make a great present for your mom because it'll last longer than flowers, costs less than a big meal, you know. Yes. <laughs> and, and she'll have it every time she looks at it, she'll remember the love that you have for her because of the love that's on the pages. I love it. Well, not no pun intended. I love that. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> a lot of love today. <laughs> My wife is, has always been just, she's the Dr. Doolittle of the family. She can talk oh. to them. And um, yeah. we have two cats with more personality than I could even describe. And for the first time, even though I've always been an animal lover, I haven't been able to get the baby them kind of talk. I, first of all, I can't, hit, I can't hit the notes my wife hits when she talks to them, which, of course, they respond to. But uh -huh. my long hair, 12-year-old kitty has just decided he loves me. And Aww. I've never really had an animal literally love me. And uh, the, yeah. the, it's something that I, I am just enjoying right now. You know, I'm 59. It's like, it's about time, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it, all, thing, all good things come to those who wait. You know? <laughs> exactly. And, and with cats, you have to wait. With, it has to be the cat's idea. You can't. Cats are, cats are tough to shoot, too. Oh, you, um, don't, you don't choose them. They choose you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I would think they would be tough to shoot too. It's like every time I try to get, oh my god, that's so cute! I gotta get a picture sooner than I'm yeah. about well, to. Well, you can't, you can't direct them. Yeah, you can't direct them. You can't have. So you know, going back to the concept, when I get the intake, it's it has to be behavior that they already do, so that I'm not trying to get them to do something that they don't already do. Right. Mm -hmm. well, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that would definitely create longer sessions, I think, Joanna. <laughs> well, and it wouldn't necessarily result in a in a good photo. You know, it's besides that's not the point of it. The no. point of it is to to find stuff that they do that to find the language they use to express their love to each other and yeah. and interpret that convert that into an image. Is is what I try to do. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Natural nature. There it is. Ooh, natural nature. Yes. I like that. Yeah. Awesome. You can use that. <laughs> <laughs> it's off the cuff too. With so. credit, right? I'll give you I'll use like a with a hat tip too. <laughs> well, so Joanna, how can we get this book? You can get this book worldwide at any online bookseller. Anything, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, plus, or, or whatever, wherever you're listening, uh, whatever bookstore online, bookseller online you can do. But you can also go to your local bookstore and order it directly from them. They will order it from the publisher. Wonderful. Yeah. And again, it's uh, notable. Um, <laughs> what's the name of my book? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that before we started, right? It's like, whoa. In good company, <laughs> notable people with their pets. And um, also, if you wanted, you could, uh, if you wanted to reach me, you could, you could reach me on my website at johannasigmund.com. J-O-H-A-N-N-A, Sigmund, S-I-E-G-M-N-M-A-N-N. -N -N. Lots of N's. N's <laughs> everywhere. Well, from a McCormack, there's nothing wrong with that, so. <laughs> there you go, yes. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I have a, there's a page with all of my interviews and reviews um, on my website. So if they missed anything here or if they want to hear more, there are a whole bunch of interviews going on. Wonderful. Uh, linked on my page, yeah. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Well, of course, and I'll leave all these uh, links in the description on my podcast. I also do a little video version that I put on my YouTube channel. So, folks, you'll find all the links to what Johanna has been talking about there. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I I don't know when I've had a more pleasurable conversation. It's been been just wonderful. And if you'd had an anaconda, I'd have come out there in a minute, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, who, who knows? <laughs> Christmas is coming in a, in a few months. And, uh, <laughs> what's in the box? Maybe not honey? an anaconda. They get, they get a, a rather large. A garden snake, you know? A garden snake. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this flute for? What do you... I, yes. I, <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, my Well, thank you again, Johanna, and uh, best of luck and best wishes on your future endeavors. Thank you so much, and thank you to your listeners for (laughs) indulging me in my my crazy ideas. Well, thank (laughs) you, and have a great summer. You too. (laughs) Bye-bye. There you have it, another retro TV radio episode in the books. Pick up your copy of In Good Company, Notable People with Their Pets, online at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or wherever books are sold. Also, be sure to check out her website, johannasigmund.com, to keep up to date with all that she has going on and coming up. You'll also find the link in the description to the Apex Protection Project and all that they're doing for America's wolves and wildlife. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this podcast and leaving me a positive rating and review. Also, be sure to follow me on social media at Golden Rage of TV on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. On Twitter, you can find me at Golden Rage of TV One. This is your host, Pat McCormack, and thanks for listening to Retro TV Radio. 